Not long ago, I released a video where I showed using one of these vegetable colanders or strainers as a wood stove. Well, that video was very well received. One of my viewers commented and asked, how would I adapt this for use in deep snow? So that's what we're going to do today. Today, I'll show you four different methods you can use your vegetable colander as a wood stove in deep snow. If you're interested, keep watching. So before we get started, I have to give credit to my friend and colleague on YouTube, Lonnie from Far North Bushcraft and Survival. Lonnie's the one who asked about using these colanders in deep snow. Not only did he ask the question, he provided one of the answers I'm going to share with you. So I have come up with three other methods to add on to Lonnie's suggestion. But before we get started, there's something I have to mention. There's no snow. So you're going to have to use your imagination and work with me on this one, that each of the methods I show you will work in deep snow. Uh, the other thing I have to mention is because it's going to take time to set each of these methods up, I won't be lighting a fire in the colander for each of them. All right, let's get started. All right, this first method is the simplest and requires no modification to the colander at all. It's simply a matter of suspending the colander over a trench in the snow using two sticks. So once again, I don't have deep snow, but I do have a couple of rocks that'll simulate it. So let me take the camera over and show you how I set it up. We may be short on snow here in Nova Scotia, but one thing we're never short on is rocks. So I've got, there's lots of rocks, at least in the area that I spend my time in. So I have two rocks here and I'm going to ask you to use your imagination again and imagine this was just some deep snow, maybe three feet deep. And I dug a trench in, uh, in, in the snow. And what I've done is taken two sticks, each of them about four feet long, maybe a little longer. Uh, these are probably an inch and a half, two inches in diameter. They can be whatever size and length of stick you feel is necessary to support your colander and I just simply tied them one to either side and now I'm using bank line for this but you can use paracord you can use wire you can use whatever you have on hand and uh, now you know I don't believe I'm going to have much of a fire risk in other words the fire in the bowl is not likely to cause me a problem with those two sticks but if you're concerned about that then pick up some sticks that are wet off of the ground they'll still do the job of supporting you but uh, or supporting the column that is be but be at lesser chance of catching fire all right so that's one way of doing it let's come up with another so this next method, again, requires no modification to the colander itself. It just requires that you have three sticks and a little bit of cordage or wire. So again, this is a very simple method. All it requires is that you have three sticks instead of two and that you lash them together to form a tripod. Now for this demonstration, I didn't do a proper wrap and frap type of lashing. I used a very expedient one where you flip one leg over, but you can get the idea from it. Now I use paracord or not paracord, bank line, but I would highly recommend that if you have it, use wire. Now, even so, there's probably five inches between the bottom of the colander and where the lashing is. So it may not cause enough heat to damage the lashing, but that's what the wire is for, so that you can ensure that you're not going to burn through and have your fire drop. But you can see it is easily at waist height for me. Now it does take a little bit of, of uh, messing around to get it set up properly so that you have the proper contact with the colander so it's not going to fall. And of course, like any fire, you have to watch it to make sure it's going to be stable during the whole time. But pretty simple, right? All right, now the next one involves a little bit more work. So this next method is the method that Lonnie from Far North Bushcraft and Survival suggested. Took me a little bit to figure out how I would accomplish it, but it wasn't all that difficult. It starts with a little bit of modification to the colander, and I had to measure and mark three equidistant points around the outside and then drill holes at those points so that I could use those holes to suspend the colander from a branch over a tree. The next thing I had to do was go to a, a hardware store and purchase some link chain. Now this is the least expensive link chain that I could find because it was going to be plenty strong enough for use for this purposes. I bought a 12 foot 
section so that each length, I broke it into four lengths, each length could be three feet in length. I also purchased a carabiner. I'll show you how that works. And I think it was probably two packages of tiny S-hooks. And I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with those as well. So as you can see, this chain is the chain that will be the one that goes over a branch to suspend this whole unit. And the other three chains attached to the carabiner are what go down to the colander and hook on. So I'm going to give you a close-up of the chain ends where the S-hooks are. So the S-hooks are very small, very simple as you can see, and uh, they do have to be closed into one of the links. At least one side of the S-hook has to be closed a little bit so that it doesn't fall off. And what you do is just simply hook them into on three sides. I'll, I'll show the completed setup when we get to the tree. Hook in the chain in those three loops and you're good to go. Now, when I set this up at home, I realized that uh, I didn't quite like the way the chains came together very quickly just over the top of the colander. I, I barely got, I think maybe, maybe, well, it was three feet high or a little less than three feet high, but they came together very quickly and I didn't think there was enough space in there to get a good size pot. Uh, cook a steak, something like that, sure. But I wanted to get the chains away from the colander, so uh, something else I bought at the store. Three eye bolts. Three eye bolts, these are, I think they're three and a half inches long, each coming with two nuts and a uh, lock washer. So let me show you how that works. I'll put one on to start. And I'll put the others on off camera. Before we go further, all right, there's one of the three eye bolts attached. Now I'm going to attach the other ones off camera and I'll come back and we'll go, we'll show you how it sets up. Okay, so I have the three eye bolts set up on the rim of the colander and you can see how much more height and distance away from the colander it's going to give me when I attach the chains. So the next thing I need to do is find a tree with a hanging branch that I can suspend it from and I'll show you what it looks like. So once again I ask you to work with me and use your imagination. The only branch that I could find that was not too high for me to reach was this one which is in fact a little bit too low but I think it'll work for the demonstration purposes and we'll talk about some options and alternatives here as we go along. So I'm going to come in a little closer and show you how I've done this. So let's move into where it's looped over the branch. Now if I had wanted to, uh, wait, well I guess what you can see is that I wrapped the chain around the branch a few times to shorten it up before linking it into itself with that little S-hook. And down here, you can see where the carabiner is and the three chains will go down from there. Let me follow it right down to the colander. And right down here at the colander, you can see where S-hooks are linked into those eye bolts and giving me plenty of open space all around for me to put a grill pot or pot supports on so that I can put a pot on, a fry pan, or whatever else. Yes, it would have worked without those eye bolts. This just gives me that much more clearance around the outside before the chain comes together and gets in the way of itself. Now you can see it's freestanding and it is moving a little bit in the slight, slight breeze that we have. So that is something you have to consider. It will be exposed to the wind so you want to be somewhere where you uh, are sheltered from the wind to the best of your ability. A couple of things I could have done here is, um, yes, I could even shorten the chains up somewhat and get a little closer to the tree. If my branch was quite a ways up, I could have used a paracord on the end of that long lead chain and thrown it over a branch so that I could bring it up a little bit higher. And of course, this is well above, you know, three feet above the... Uh, the, the fire itself, so it's not at risk of being melting through any paracord that would be up that high. Very simple. This was Lonnie's idea. I may have taken a little bit of license and done some alterations to what he was thinking, but this is the basic concept that he came up with for suspending this off of a branch over deep snow. All right, I have one more method I want to share with you. So coming up with this last method involved actually taking two of the previous methods and putting them together. And that involves using the three chains and a tripod. Let me show you how this works. So I guess there's two ways I could have used the tripod for this setup. I could have used the three chains 
linked together at the carabiner with the lead chain thrown over the top of the tripod and then let the thing hang freely. But when I come up with this idea, I said this is even more stable and uh, much, much more adjustable as well. So I took each of the three chains, unlinked them from the carabiner. At the end of those chains, I have an additional S-hook. So there's S-hooks at both ends of the chains wrapped them around the three legs of the tripod, tried to get as close as I could to the equal amount of chain between each, hooked them onto the eye bolts, and then all it was was just simply a matter of spreading the legs out until I got the, the uh, thing to set level, the colander to set level, and we're good to go. Now, as you can see, there's even a pot hook hanging off of the tripod that I can use to suspend right over this. And this is uh, maybe not quite three feet off of the ground. So yes, it would involve having a tripod or at least making a tripod when you're in deep snow, but it is an option if you have a tripod. This is probably the most stable way of setting up the colander. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting and maybe a little bit helpful. I'll tell you, this was a fun video to make. And what I really liked and enjoy about making this video was building on somebody else's idea. So yes, the original idea came from Lonnie at Fire North Bushcraft and Survival. It works, works very well as you saw, but it was able to build on that and come up with some other ideas that really made this a fun project. But I know that the four methods I showed you are not the only four methods for suspending a colander in deep snow. So that's where I open it up to you. If what would you do different from what I've done to either enhance the methods I've already used or something completely different. If you have some suggestions, I'd love to see them. Please put them in the comments section below. If you have any questions about how I made this or how I put it together, maybe I didn't provide you enough detail, maybe I can answer those questions in the comments. If not, I can certainly make another video. If I get enough suggestions different from what I've already done, I'd love to make another video. So please encourage me by putting some great suggestions in the comments section. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.